One of the most challenging topics in GCSE combined science is doing calculations with reacting masses. Your teacher might have described this as calculating theoretical yield or predicted yield. Now, I'm not saying that these questions are simple, but they are definitely achievable because there's a really systematic method. And it's worth spending the time to learn how to do them because they're often worth four or five marks and loads of people are just going to leave them completely blank. So if you can do one of these successfully, you're going to put yourself at a big advantage. Before we start, let's talk about what it is we're actually working out. Imagine you have a recipe and the recipe says that if you have two eggs, you can make 11 pancakes. If I told you I was going to give you six eggs, then it wouldn't take you much to figure out that you could make 33 pancakes because you could just use that ratio. But let's say I was really unhelpful and I told you I would give you 500 grams of eggs. Well, first of all, you would need to convert that into a format you could actually use with your recipe. I can't just use the ratio 2 to 11 straight away because then I'd be making nearly 3,000 pancakes and clearly that's not right. But if you knew that an egg weighed 62.5 grams, you could do 500 grams divided by 62.5 grams to find out I was actually giving you eight eggs. And then we can go back to our ratio 2 to 11 and you could just use it and find out we would make 44 pancakes. That's all reacting mass calculations are. They're putting a mass into a usable format and then using a recipe to figure out how many of something else you'll make. Let's take an example. The question tells me that 32.5 grams of sodium azide is decomposed, which means broken down. I need to work out what mass of nitrogen is released. They've given me the balanced symbol equation. Now, exam tip first, cross out anything that's not mentioned in the question. You don't want to waste time fiddling with chemicals that aren't even needed. I always like to write the mass under the right chemical and a question mark under the other one, just to stop me from messing up and doing the calculation the wrong way around. Because sometimes these questions are going to ask how much of something you make, but then sometimes they're going to be backwards from that. So we might say, oh, you've made 55 pancakes, how many eggs did you start with? Once I've crossed things out, my first real step is to work out the relative formula masses. Now remember, a relative formula mass is the mass of one mole. So for now, I'm just going to ignore the coefficients, these big numbers at the front. We'll use them later, but for now we're calculating MR. I use the periodic table to find the relative mass of each element. That's the bigger of the two numbers. I multiply that relative mass by the number of atoms of each type. So here in sodium azide, there's one sodium with a mass of 23, and three nitrogen atoms with a mass of 14 each. That gives me a total MR of 65 grams per mole. In other words, one mole would weigh 65 grams. Now I'm going to look at the other side of my equation and work out the MR here. I've got two atoms of nitrogen and I know that nitrogen has a mass of 14, so that gives me a total MR of 28. So I know that one mole of sodium azide would weigh 65 grams. And I know that I've got 32.5 grams. So now I need one of the only equations that I need to remember in chemistry. And that equation is mass is Mr. Mole. Or in other words, the total mass is MR, that's the relative formula mass, times by the number of moles I've got. Now if I rearrange that by dividing both sides by MR, what I'm left with is that the number of moles I've got is the mass, that's 32.5 grams, divided by the MR, the relative formula mass, which is 65 grams. And if I do 32.5 divided by 65, I find out that I have half a mole of sodium azide. Now I need to go back to my recipe and find out how much of the nitrogen that's going to make. In my example at the beginning, I knew that two eggs could be used to make 11 pancakes. What these coefficients in the balanced symbol equation tell me is that two moles of sodium azide can be used to make three moles of nitrogen. So in other words, I've got 50% more nitrogen. Now for lots of you, that's probably quite a straightforward calculation that you could just do in your head. 50% more than 0.5 is going to be 0.75. But let's look at how we actually got there, because sometimes you're not just going to be able to look at these and do them in your head. So what I do is I take that 0.5 moles, remember that's how many particles of sodium azide I've got, and I look at the balanced symbol equation, and sodium azide has a 2 in front of it. So I'm going to divide my 0.5 by 2. And then the thing that I'm trying to work out, the nitrogen, the coefficient there, the big number at the front, is 3. So I'm going to now multiply my answer by 3. So 0.5 divided by 2 times by 3, that gives me 0.75 moles. So what this tells me is that my original 0.5 moles of sodium azide, which weighed 32.5 grams, 
is now going to make 0.75 moles of nitrogen. So at this point, I've got most of the marks in the question, but to finish off, I need to know what the mass of that nitrogen is. Well, if we come back to our equation that mass is Mr. Mole, mass is MR times the number of moles. 0.75 is the number of moles, so what's the MR? Well, I've already worked that out up here, it's 28. So 28 times by 0.75 gives me a final mass of 21, and then because it's a mass, I obviously want to put some units after it, and the units are grams. So 32.5 grams of sodium azide makes 21 grams of nitrogen gas. Hopefully you followed that okay, but let's look at one more example just in case. Here we've been asked to calculate the maximum theoretical yield of aluminium sulphate when 9.45 grams of aluminium reacts with sulfuric acid. So first of all, don't panic. Maximum theoretical yield just means what is the most aluminium sulphate you could make. If this reaction goes perfectly, if we don't lose any in extraction, if we don't have any side reactions, we don't have any reversible reactions, how much aluminium sulphate should we make? Just like before, my first step is going to be adding the numbers from the question underneath my equation and crossing out anything I don't need to use. I could spend ages working out what the relative formula mass of sulfuric acid is, only to realise that I didn't even need it to answer this question. So make sure whatever mass they've given you, that goes under that chemical, and whatever chemical they've asked you to calculate the mass for, then you put your question marks. Everything else you cross out. My first step was working out the relative masses of everything involved. Now here, I've actually got an element rather than a compound, so I'm going to write AR rather than MR. But really, there's no functional difference. They're both the relative mass, they're both the mass of one mole. So just like we did in the last example, I'm going to ignore the coefficient, because even though I know that there are two moles of aluminium in this equation, the relative formula mass is just the mass of one mole, so I want to work out how much one mole weighs. And I do that just by looking up the number in my periodic table. Now, aluminium sulphate is a bit more complicated. You can see that we've got brackets here around the sulphate group, that SO4. So you need to remember that the three outside the brackets applies to everything inside the brackets. So you could expand that and say, well, there are three sulfurs and 12 oxygens. Or you could do what I've done here and say we've got three times the mass of one sulfur and four oxygen. Whichever way you choose to do it, you're going to get the same answer, which is 342 grams per mole. So once I've got both of those relative masses, I can start using my favourite chemistry equation, mass is Mr. Mole, to work out how many moles of aluminium I have. So the mass given to me in the question was 9.45 grams. And the relative mass, which in this example is strictly speaking an AR rather than an MR, is 27. So I do 9.45 divided by 27, and I find out that that gives me 0.35 moles of aluminium. Now I need to start looking at my coefficients, those big numbers at the front. So remember, you're dividing by the coefficient of the thing you've got, in this case the aluminium, and multiplying by the coefficient of the thing you're trying to work out, in this case the aluminium sulphate. So I'm dividing by 2 and multiplying by 1, which gives me a total number of moles of 0.175. Now my last step is to go back to that equation, back to masses Mr. Mole, and work out that 342 times by 0.175 moles is 59.85 grams, which is my final answer to the question.